The 1980s at the Alabama Space and Rocket Center was a time of massive expansion. After a successful first decade, the Rocket Center was ready to take the next step. The question was, what would that next step look like? The answer was to be found in a conversation Center Director Ed Buckby had with Werner Von Braun shortly before Von Braun's passing in 1977. He says, you know, we have all kinds of camps in this country. We need a science camp. And that was the beginning of what today is space camp. The idea of a space camp spurred Buckby to create a camp unlike any other the world had ever seen. A camp where children could come and train like real astronauts do. By 1982, this idea had finally become a reality in the form of U.S. Space Camp. Built on the Alabama Space and Rocket Center property, U.S. Space Camp was a program developed by the Rocket Center with help from NASA and other educational organizations. In the summer of 1982, 747 children in fourth through sixth grade came to Huntsville, Alabama for the first pilot program of Space Camp. I like to think they're going to be the space flying generation because this generation is really the first one to come along in the midst of all of this and they're going to have a start, an opportunity to start from scratch and really make a contribution to space travel. U.S. Space Camp was an immediate success, thanks in large part to the renewed interest in space among children with the dawn of the space shuttle program in 1981. A camp catering to future astronauts is doing a very brisk business, even at $400 a camper a week. U.S. Space Camp garnered lots of media attention, and even the eyes of former astronauts, such as Alan Shepard, John Glenn, and Wally Schirra, who quickly became early advocates for the U.S. Space Camp. I like to see successors groomed to come along behind us, and the Space Camp is the best way I know of to entice children into being interested in what we did in the past. During much of the 80s, Buckby found himself on countless television programs, such as David Letterman. Boy, oh boy. All right, now you're floating in space. I am. I'm floating in space. Space Camp even found itself being visited by world leaders, like then Vice President of the United States, George H.W. Bush. I am absolutely convinced that what we're seeing here today including the education of young Americans, look into the future in terms of science, technology, the emphasis here on space is absolutely vital to our country. The U.S. Space Camp program proved so successful that only two years after opening, a new program was added to increase the age range of children who could attend. With the creation of U.S. Space Academy Level 1 in June 1984, children in 7th through 9th grade could now attend Space Camp. This was followed in 1985 by Adult Space Academy, allowing adults to experience the same Space Camp programs over the course of one weekend. Finally, U.S. Space Academy Level 2 was added in 1987, allowing children in 10th through 12th grade to attend. The increased number of campers led to the creation of a new training center in August of 1987, with a 122,000 gallon underwater astronaut trainer, similar to the neutral buoyancy simulator at Marshall Space Flight Center, as well as a new space camp habitat in August of 1988. To help provide program outreach and increase distribution of U.S. Space Camp's educational mission, the U.S. Space Camp Foundation was formed in 1987. Growth was rapid, and U.S. Space Camp placed the Alabama Space and Rocket Center on a global stage. Visitors were now coming from all over the world to see the home of the famous Space Camp. This led to many new exhibits and attractions at the Rocket Center. The Alabama Space and Rocket Center sought to bring an emerging and immersive cinematic technology in the form of the Space Dome IMAX Theater. The massive dome would surround the audience, while the 70 millimeter IMAX film projection would deliver images of unparalleled quality for the time, allowing for deeper and more engrossing educational film content at the museum. When the Space Dome IMAX Theater opened on December 19, 1982, much like the debut of U.S. Space Camp, it was an immediate success for the center. The other major addition came in the form of a new outdoor area called Shuttle Park. At the heart of Shuttle Park was to be an actual space shuttle test article called Pathfinder. Pathfinder was a test article made of wood and steel built by Marshall Space Flight Center in 1977 to the exact weight, 
and dimensions of an actual space shuttle orbiter. It was used for facilities testing without requiring use of the more expensive shuttle orbiters. After sitting in storage for many years, Pathfinder was obtained by America Japan Society Incorporated, who hired Teledyne Brown Engineering to refurbish Pathfinder and make it look more like an actual space shuttle. Upon completion of the $1 million project, Pathfinder went on display at the Great Space Shuttle Exposition in Tokyo, Japan from June 1983 to August 1984. When Pathfinder finally returned to the United States, it came to reside at the Alabama Space and Rocket Center. Working with NASA, the Rocket Center acquired two solid rocket boosters and an external tank to form a full shuttle stack. A display stand was constructed and Pathfinder was mounted on top of the shuttle stack in May 1988. By the mid-80s, the increased international attention spurred a name change, as the Alabama Space and Rocket Center simply became the Space and Rocket Center. Of course, nothing increased the international appeal of both the Space and Rocket Center and U.S. Space Camp more than Hollywood. The Space and Rocket Center found itself playing the role of a Hollywood backlot in three different movies, from 1979's Ravagers, starring Richard Harris and Art Carney, to 1989's Beyond the Stars, featuring Martin Sheen and Christian Slater. However, no movie had a greater impact for the center than 1986's Space Camp. Space Camp told the story of a group of teenagers at a fictionalized version of the real Space Camp who accidentally find themselves blasted into space. The movie starred Kate Capshaw, Leah Thompson, Tom Skerritt, and a very young Joaquin Phoenix in his big screen debut. The movie came out shortly after the Challenger accident and did not find great success at the box office as a result but the movie became a cult classic as it found its way to home video. The impact of the movie Space Camp made demand for the U.S. Space Camp programs higher than ever. In order to meet that growing demand, ground was broken in 1987 on a second Space Camp campus in Titusville, Florida, just a few miles from the Kennedy Space Center. The doors of Space Camp Florida opened in April 1988 and allowed more children from around the country to experience the magic of Space Camp. Then in the summer of 1989, the Space and Rocket Center found itself once more in the spotlight when it came time to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. The Rocket Center produced a nighttime show in Rocket Park for the occasion, titled Footprints on the Moon. The show combined lasers, theatrical reenactments of the lunar landing, fireworks, and appearances from the Apollo 11 crew themselves to tell the story of how America made it to the moon in July 1969. All of us had uh, flown rockets before, but the next morning we were going to ride on no military hand-me-down or popcorn firecracker. We were going to ride on the Saturn V, a uh, fire-spitting, thunder-clapping, go-to-the-moon machine. It was a great ride. And we would like to thank all of you who participated in that project and made it a reality. Thanks so much for one great ride. As the 1980s concluded, the Space and Rocket Center was riding higher than ever before, with even greater things on the horizon.